Greetings one and all, and welcome to another Dark Rider Pony Analysis. I am the Nightmare Rider, Major Mine, reminding you, as always, that even a cheeseburger can be deconstructed to its original source. Poor Little Spike hasn't had the best treatment this season, but often tends to have some of the lesser quality episodes in the show as a whole. He is best when he is making snarky comments or observations towards other ponies, while he is at his worst when his childish and naive nature are the driving force of any given conflict in the episode. As episodes like Power Ponies, Spike at Your Service, and an episode episode I have a personal vendetta against just for sidekicks have shown, when Spike's character flaws are being explored, they are almost always disproportionate to the event that transpires in the episode. Thankfully, inspiration manifestation finally seems to have gotten it right. Spike has always shown, for better or for worse, a strong sense of duty that drives him to take any opportunity he can to help his friends, as well as having a strong sense of empathy towards them. Despite minimal and sometimes groan-worthy depiction of dragons in Equestria, Dragons are generally seen as greedy and selfish. Spike is the opposite of this. Having been raised by Twilight since birth, he genuinely tries to be as selfless and helpful as possible. So when Rarity cries about how important having a creative contribution to the Ponyville Festival is for her, after the puppeteer rejected her cart design, Spike looks for something that will help use Rarity's magic to create something fast. His childlike naivety comes into play when he discovers the Inspiration Manifestation book. He overlooks the signs of danger as well as warring some Owlicious in favour of his desire to find something helpful towards Rarity. It's clear that he doesn't have the same recognition of dark magic as Twilight may do, as he does not recognise any potential danger it may have. A lot of how Spike's conflict progresses in the episode is shown through his body language and facial expressions. At first he is startled by Rarity's more obsessive looks, but when he measures this against the value of what's being created, he rationalises these worries away. But as Rarity's creations grow in more elaborate and extreme ways, Spike's hesitancy to justify the creation grow too. He clearly recognises that things are getting out of hand, but he doesn't want to admit for fear of losing Rarity's friendship. This conflict is understandable, considering that we have seen in episodes like the Crystal Empire two-parter that Spike's biggest fear is being rejected by those close to him. There hasn't been enough information to suggest exactly why this is the case yet, but that's something I hope that is explored in future episodes. The dark magic that commands Rarity to go on a massive magical creation spree is something I have mixed feelings on. On a positive side, the tone does very well to live up to its name. It latches onto Rarity's desire for creativity, turning it from something that was expressed through a desire to contribute to an event that everyone can enjoy, to smothering half of Ponyville in shining golden crystal, purely for the sake of seeing her own creations come to life. She literally projects her own point of view as to what she considers stylish on everyone else without even even remotely considering what would be practical. This is why I can forgive her initial impractical design of Puppeteer's cart, since it did well to set up that it is within Rarity's character to sometimes let her creativity overlook practicality. The biggest gripe in this episode for me was the mechanics of the inspiration manifestation itself, or rather, the lack of any clear coherency as to how the dark magic works in spawning all of these elaborate and exotic objects seemingly out of nowhere. So far, based on the magic we have seen in Equestria, including dark magic, it all seems to be based on the manipulation of existing objects. If there is no object to magic to act upon, all we get is a glowing unicorn horn. Spawning several golden chariots seemingly out of nowhere doesn't fit with what we know about dark magic since it's usually depicted as manipulating the minds of ponies under its influence. Explaining or at the very least demonstrating how magic works in any given world is vital to fantasy fiction. To quote Terry Pratchett, if you use magic in fiction, the first thing you have to do is put barriers up. There must be limits to magic. If you can snap your fingers and make anything happen, where's the fun in that? The story really starts when you put limits on magic. Where fantasy gets a bad name is when anything can happen because a wizard snaps his fingers. Magic has to come with a cost, probably a much bigger cost than when things are done what is usually considered the hard way. Now, I'm not exactly expecting a complete Twilight Sparkle style lecture on how dark magic works. Either a mention in the initial casting of the spell, have Twilight give it a passing mention, or show that it takes some physical toll on Rarity for using it would have been good enough. I can forgive Discord's magic for being random nonsense since he is the god of chaos. He frequently leaves ponies scratching their heads as to how he summons everything. The entire point of his character revolved around his magic being a bizarre enigma, so explaining how he works isn't exactly necessary. Another concern that a number of other bronies have pointed out is the dialogue. 
While it did feel very on the nose and repetitive at times, it wasn't to the same extent of Traja and Power Ponies. The episode needs to be slower paced so you can understand why Spike doesn't just tell Rarity how obsessive she is acting right away. Perhaps spending more time with her and Spike designing Puppeteer's cart would have solved some of the slower pacing in the middle, but I don't think it was that bad altogether. Overall, this episode does a great job of pushing the limits of both Rarity's and Spike's character boundaries without going too far. While there is some excessive dialogue towards the middle, I find that this has more justification than the poorly defined workings of the dark magic tome. But the episode achieved its goal of maturing both the limits of Spike's morals and his friendship with Rarity, doing so in a much more well thought out way than something like Dragon Quest or Simple Ways. I give Inspiration Manifestation a final grade of an A-. Until the next review, this is the Nightmare Rider, Major Mind, riding out.